Welcome. The Lord bless you so much. Bishop Peter Timo uh, Dongo, we're reaching out to you from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati Nairobi. Uh, we are excited to know that we are serving God on time. This is a moment whereby God is looking for spokesmen, people who can speak by inspiration mouth. Whatever you are, maybe you are sitting somewhere, you are watching through, through your phone, laptop, you are, you are TV, uh, screen, where, wherever you are, I know the Lord you heal. We have seen and witnessed people getting healed. The other time, there's this man who was watching uh, our program with the TV, and uh, he was on a wheelchair, and he had a problem with the backbone, the disc was somehow dislocated and could not walk. And the children, because the man is old, uh, expected any time that old man would collapse. But instead of corruption, I was preaching and, and I said, people touch whenever they have problem. That area that is aching, that area that is deformed. But that man did not get the real message. He, he thought, I said, go and touch the TV. So... He went there with the wheelchair, touched the TV. But as I prayed, power of God went through his body, direct the backbone. And the, the discs were aligned. And there was a kind of uh, uh, a sound that emanated from that kind of movement. And the man straight away got healed. So when the children came to see the father, to comfort the father. They found him walking the, in, the, in the residence, the, in the compound, and doing some work. He said, I'm, I've been healed as Bishop Katimo was praying for people through the TV. And even today through YouTube, we can pray for you and you'll be healed. We can pray for your family and children be restored, your husband, your marriage be restored. We can pray for your hands and your hands be changed from Failure, cast to blessing and success is possible in Jesus' name. Our message today is start your work with God. Start your work with God. We are saying start your work with God. You start your work with God. It's important. It's one thing to get saved. It's another thing to start a work. That's what the Bible says in Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Two cannot walk together unless they agree. Actually, we are talking about a walk that has, has a name, a walk that has a meaning, a walk that is definite, is real, it is actualized, it has been started, it's real. Start a walk. Make a decision. From today, I want to walk with God. And... Um, Let's see some of the very important things that we need to consider. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4, Jeremiah was living his own life. I'm saying again, Jeremiah was living his own life, although he was like a priest related with some, a family in, in Anathoth, in Benjamin, but he lived his own, his own life, ordinary life, that he felt was okay. But when you go to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4, the Bible says, the Bible says, uh -huh. uh, the Bible says something very important here. Let's see. Verse 4. The word of God came to me. The, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and ordained you as a prophet of the nations. Now, you realize this was done before. Note, the word before is used twice. Before I formed you. That is past tense. Before I formed you in your mother's womb. Yes, I formed you there. I knew you. It's okay. And then, before you were born. This is past tense. Because Jeremiah is already existing. With, maybe he was a teenager. He's grown up. But God is talking about Pastors, before you are born, I sanctified you and I ordained you to be a prophet. But note, now is later when Jeremiah is becoming a prophet. God knew him before he was formed. He formed him in the mother's womb. And 
God also knew him, sanctified him, ordained him uh, before he was born. And he was sanctified and ordained to be a prophet. But when you go to verse 6, God now comes when Jeremiah has already lived some years. And say, now Jeremiah, uh, uh -huh. you have to go now. You are a prophet. I believe in Jesus' name. Every person who is born in this world, you may not be a prophet, but you are God ordained you and sanctified you to become somebody effective for his own kingdom. When you are that innocent baby eh, in your mother's womb and, uh, and uh, the mother is languishing in labor pain and you are coming out and God says, before you came out, I started breathing in eh, oxygen, carbon dioxide. On, what, before you started experiencing what you see around in this world, I made sure before you came out, I set you apart for me. Now, we can't say because you are drunkard, God not choose you. That one came later. Later. That is interference. We can't say because you are fornicator, God did not choose you. We can't say because you, 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 maybe you are a drug addict, God did not choose you. We only need to remove those things that you found on the way and bring now the original. The original plan I know with all my heart. If we pray deeply, and I've seen this in the ministry, most people, when I pray so deep and I lay hands on them, what God blinks as a prophecy is the positive, powerful program that God has for them. Ah, it's so great, so great. Sometimes I pray for sons and daughters on the phone. My son is horrible, he's drug addict, he's, he's abusing, whatever. And then when I ask God, what do you want that son? God God will say, or tell me, tell the parent, that man is my servant. That man is my, that person is my daughter. That person is important in the kingdom. And therefore, I say to you, if you're going to, to start your work with God, we want now, by the grace of God, to go back and draw from the powerful plan of God what God ordained you to become. And God, whatever he ordained you to be, is something that you affect the world. Is something that you take dominion. Is something that you affect lives. Is something that you make you effective. Is something that you make you have a place in this world. You know, we are born, and sometimes we are born in a village somewhere. That's where you are born. But God has a program built that village. You are born in a cave. You are born in a hospital. You are born in a ghetto. You are born maybe in an estate. But that's where the parent raised you in. But the truth is, if you yourself, you are keen enough to pray and be open to God, God will tell you how he chose you. And I thank God for what I have seen with my eyes. I, today I can confirm, I know one bishop who used to sell alcohol. So much that life was hopeless and parents had given up. And I raised that bishop. I actually consecrated him to be a bishop. And today in Nairobi, that man has big, big churches. Actually, his main, main church has thousands and thousands of members. Yes, the issue of sharing alcohol, sharing wine, uh, and drinking it beyond proportion, becoming drunkard, and, and living hopeless life, that was not original. I want to destroy that thing which is not original in you. It must act. God did not create you to fornicate. He created you to be a mighty woman, a mighty man in the kingdom. You are a millionaire. You are supposed to have money. God did not create anybody to be poor. Yes. Neither God did, did, God did not create you to be poor so that in poverty can be glorified. God does not use poverty to glorify himself. God uses mighty acts of favor to glorify himself. And therefore, by God's grace, one or if you, we are going to start my work and your work with God. And this is what we are telling you. Just as God spoke to Jeremiah, before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you. Before you were born, he appointed you. Before you were born, he sanctified you. Appointing means allocating some work. Sanctified, being sanctified means 
being set for that work. Being set apart for that work. That's very, very important. Second thing is what you need to do is, is what happened to our brother Noah. If you go to the scriptures in the book of Genesis, that is chapter 6, verse 8, when God was so angry and thought after the world had population explosion, you know, rapid population explosion, and people tended to be like Satanists. People worshipped the devil. People started having uh, satanic practices. And the world was full of satanism. And God said, no, I want to destroy all people. I want to destroy everything. As God, is, God was saying, this project of raising man on earth should end. And I give up with it. And I leave it up. But the Bible says in verse 8, when God was contemplating on how to wipe out the issue of man on earth and forget him, God said, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I say by God's grace, there could be a devastating issue through your family, through your life, and you are sick. And it's as if you are giving up. I want to say this. You could be the brother. You could be the Noah of today. That although God is angry. Although God is angry with your family. Because of witchcraft. God is angry with your life. Because of evil, evil, evil. Yeah? Sex perversions. That are so extreme in this world. And they are being licensed. Yeah? There's a country I went in. I don't want to say which country it is. And, and they confirmed, they have, that is 15 years ago, they had 5,000 registered witches. Somewhere, somewhere in Europe, not in Africa. You know, witches. You know, things are bad. But I say this by God's grace. Even if things are so bad, I want to tell you now as I preach to you, you are the north today. May you find grace in the eyes of God, and through you, God, you, God will be happy, and release a plan of propagating his purpose through your family. Yes, I know. You know, last week I met one of a relative, an old man. He said, he said, Bishop, don't you know our family used to be so evil? And he was the first person to discover the set of the kingdom. And he said, no, you know, Bishop, through you, all evil people in our family, and it's a large family, who used to be witches, satanists, I tell you, you could hear funny stories. In our village, if you, if you could hear people screaming in the village, we knew it is our young people causing chaos. Our people are drunkards. But I came out as Noah. And I remember when I was so young, I could fast for two days every week. Two days, and I was a teenager. It continued almost for 20 years. Two days, praying, interceding for the family. God, destroy this. So that one was telling you, do you know today, Bishop, all people are saved. We have now the glory of God. And he said, Bishop, now call all our relatives. You are the prophet of the house, call of them. Because we need to be together now in God. He was saying, we were scattered because of enmity. But now we can be one because of Christ. I say, can you become the Noah of today? As the God is going to be angry with your family. But how? I think God today is, we can say, you, James, you, Thomas, you, Grace, you have found grace in the eyes of God. And through you, God can propagate his plan in that family. And I can see brothers and sisters all over. I say right now as I speak, if you are watching me, God has appointed you and you have found grace. And receive it now, receive it now, set yourself apart, go and raise, let God raise on you and me. A plan to rescue the families. Yes. And Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And God gave him a plan to rescue the generations, even animals. So that after God destroys the whole earth. Through Noah, God will raise generations and generations. Which God can do through us. Another thing is, know how to keep favor with God. Look at Luke chapter 1 verse 30. Luke chapter 1 verse 30. 
Luke chapter 1 verse 30. This is Mary. Uh, Mary has a unique visitation by age of Gabriel. And said, now woman, there's something unique about you. You have found favor. Do not be afraid, Mary. Just go to Luke chapter 1 verse 30. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. And Mary said, now how comes I'll, I'll be pregnant and I don't know any man. I'm a virgin. And the age of God said, the, the, the spirit of God will overshadow you. And that's verse 35. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And and Mary said, and they just said, verse 37, for with God nothing will be impossible. And Mary said in verse 38, behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. Time has come that I say, behold the servant, the bold servant of God. Let it be to, to me according to the word from heaven. If you are going to start a walk with God, we need to declare or to accept or to, to, to confirm acceptance like Mary. Behold, I am a maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. If you do that, God, you have a space in you. God, you have a space in your mouth. God, you have a space in your heart. God, you have a space in your legs. And God just take over. When Mary said that, then you departed. And Mary, after some time, realized she's pregnant. The will of God was perfected. And after some time, he gave birth to Jesus Christ. And significant things happened around the birth of Christ. And Mary knew this son is surely the son of God. And that's why God can use you also in a unique project. If you accept his calling and say, let it be to me according to your word. That's very, very important in just Christ's name. We can go to chapter 2 of the same book, verse 19. Verse 19. Chapter 2, uh, verse 19. The Bible says, if you check chapter 2, verse 19, uh, there's something you notice about Mary. Well, after the birth of Jesus, there is a verse that is repeated like right now three, 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 four times. No one knew this is only Mary. If you go to verse 19, it says, And Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. What is that? As Mary nurtured the baby Jesus, as the baby grew up, there were some unique features that accompanied uh, the uh, uh, her that went along with the growth of Jesus Christ. Sometimes angels would just come and speak. Sometimes Jesus would, in his teenage, would start uh, uh, speaking words of authority and great wisdom. Maybe Joseph not know this. Neighbors not know this. But the Bible says, Mary pondered, pondered, kept some things in her heart knowing the kind of child, son, he gave birth to. And that's why you need, as you grow and walk with God, have such a thing. Keep all these things and ponder them in your heart. What is that? There are things that God will do through you or along the way that you show you, surely, God has appointed you. Sometimes you have a dream. Sometimes you just go somewhere, pray for somebody, and he is healed. Sometimes you, you, are, you are driving around the road, and God just come around and rescue you. And you note, if you connect those incidents, incident number A, number B, number C, number D, they show you surely God has chosen you, and you are taking a direction that is unique. Ponder them in your heart as you wait for the full manifestation 
of God's calling in your life. That is very, very important in just Christ's name. If you go to the same book, Luke, as we finish the part one of this message, Luke chapter 10, and let's go to verse 39. Luke 10, verse 39. The Bible says, Luke 10, verse 39. Now, this is a time when Jesus visited uh, Mary and Martha in Bethany. And the Bible says, when Christ visited, Martha was so much busy, distracted, busy, busy. It's, it was like she was confused. It was not normal way of cooking. It's not normal way of preparing a meal. Christ says, mother was distracted with much serving. Let's look at the word being distracted. Now, being distracted is being hampered from becoming or achieving or getting across or getting through. You are distracted. You are not clear about what you are supposed to do. And if you, even if you are doing something, you are not coming out clearly or in a special way that thing. <laughs> when my mother found Christ in the house, the um, Bible says in verse 40, he was distracted with much serving. And Mary was seated at the feet of Christ. And mother came and said to Jesus, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me alone? And Christ said, Mother, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part. Verse 42, which will not be taken away from her. You need to know in your walk and my walk with God, when you are supposed to remain still at the feet of Jesus for impartation. In the walk with God, we will demand that after some walk, don't be distracted by anything. Be at the feet of Christ for impartation. I say start your walk with God. That day, mother was distracted with so many things, but although Mary previously used to cook for Jesus, this time Mary noticed it's not time to be distracted. It's time to stay at the feet of Jesus for impartation. And Christ said, today, whatever Mary has received, we will never be taken away from her. Nor in your walk with God at a particular moment of the day or the month of the year when you are supposed to be at the feet of Christ to receive a portion, anointing, revelation, mystery of the kingdom that will never be taken away from you. That's very important. I want to say, in our walk with God, there are times when God wants to put in me something that will never be taken away from me. It requires that I remain, I know that time, I, be, I discern it and avoid being distracted to be there and receive it. May God help you and help me as we engage in this powerful message and revelation. Start your walk with God now. Do not lay again. God bless you. We continue next time, part two. God bless you.